Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Sinister Wisdom's Valentine's Day reading titled My Tongue Exact, an erotic reading and open mic. As you were coming in from the waiting room, we were pleased to share the song Peace and Harmony written by Carol Kramer and performed by your girlfriend, sort of our, one of our patron music um, uh, artists here at Sinister Wisdom. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to do a couple quick announcements to get us started um, and then we'll dive right in. We have two featured readers this evening and a full open mic. So we have a great evening planned. Um, I'm Julie Enzer. I can't remember if I said that. I'm so happy to welcome you and thank you for joining us as a part of your Valentine's Day. We will wrap up by eight o'clock on the East Coast time, including a little bit of time for everyone to dance before we sign off as is part of our Sinister Wisdom tradition now. If you're not familiar with Sinister Wisdom, Sinister Wisdom is a quarterly journal of lesbian literature and arts. If you are not currently a subscriber, I encourage you to sign up for a subscription today um, by going to sinisterwisdom.org backslash subscribe. Also, if you're able, you might want to be a monthly sustainer, giving three, five, or maybe even $100 a month to support our work. You can sign up as a, as a sustainer at sinisterwisdom.org slash sustainers. I send out emails each and every month when your gift comes in with behind the scene details and new information about what's coming up for the journal. So before we begin, uh, I have a few housekeeping items. First, everyone is now muted, and I encourage you to keep your microphone muted throughout the program. If we hear noise from you, we'll mute you again. Um, there, there will be an opportunity at the end. Everyone can be unmuted while the dancing happens, and you can um, wave at folks and have a little chat. Um, the best place to do chat is in the chat bar. If you're not fam that familiar with Zoom, there should be a chat button either at the bottom of your screen or the top of your screen. Screen. If you click on that, the chat box will either appear or be at the side of your application. You're welcome to put stuff in there. Welcome other folks. Introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from. As our program proceeds, if you want to share appreciation for the readers, you can wave your hands at the end of each reading. You can use the reaction emojis that are in the Zoom. If you want to test that out now, you should see reactions and you can put a heart. The heart appears up on my screen for the reaction that I just gave. There's a handful of reactions. Um, also, as I said, light up the chat on Zoom and put comments on Facebook. We are also on Facebook Live. If you need technical assistance this evening, feel free to chat with me, Casey or Juno. Their names are on the screen and you can wave at them as well. They're also marked as co-hosts. We are recording the event this evening and we'll make it available starting Tuesday or Wednesday at sinisterwisdom.org slash SW119. Finally, the challenging news uh, for our whole Sinister Wisdom community, while Sinister Wisdom 119 does live in the world and exist as an embodied copy of the journal, it is struggling to find its way to subscribers because the US Postal Service is overwhelmed and um, underfunded and underappreciated. But I have heard from two or three people within the past week that it has made appearances in Arizona, Minneapolis, and San Francisco. So they are wending their way out there into the world. I did an update in the email last week about this. We're giving them, I'm talking regularly to our mail house. We're giving until the end of February to kind of reassess. Um, but they are flowing through and I think that they will make their way to subscribers um, and uh, fingers crossed. If they don't, we're going to reprint and remail the issue as needed. Um, so those are my updates. And now we will go on to our program. Uh, we have two featured readers this evening and I'm thrilled to introduce our first one. Marley Miller is a queer Black activist, writer, puppeteer, and performer based in Brooklyn, New York. 
She draws inspiration for her work from love, dreams, social justice, mental illness, and the process of exploring identity. She also attributes a large part of her artistic influence to dancing with her queer chosen family. Audre Lorde, writing her signature love letters, Nikki Giovanni, and crying while sipping wine in the shower. Marley has performed with Bread and Puppet Theater and Sacred Circle Theater Company. In addition, she's performed her own work at various events, including Our Words, a Black art story event hosted by the Audre Lorde Project. Marley is a VONA, Voices of Our, National, our, of our Nation's Art Foundation alum, and her poetry appeared in Sinister Wisdom 117. I'm thrilled to welcome this evening, Marley Miller. Marley, go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. I think I'm unmuted, can you hear me? Okay, cool. Okay, thank you for that great introduction. Um, hello everyone, happy Valentine's Day. Um, I'm going to read three poems, um, all love poems, super sappy, which is usually what I tend to gravitate towards. Um, and this first one is from uh, Sinister Wisdom issue 117, Lesbians in the City. Um, and I'll just get started. Femmes Loving Femmes, A List of Thoughts. Kiwi vanilla scented perfume trapped between the folds of her dress. I find strands of golden hair entwined with my shoelaces a few days later. I once discovered new territory in the soft valley between her thighs. I did not plant a flag there. One night, I begged her to sing with me in between wine scented hiccups. Carrying her dead weight, the night she ran into my arms and cried was much easier than I expected. Desperately, I tried to grasp onto pieces of you to keep with me after you left. Time passes so quickly and your hair is so long now. Thank you. Um, and this next one is called Full. Full. I have a flood of you inside me. I think if doctors did an x-ray, they'd see little people on sailboats, trying to survive the turbulent waves that crash and split apart just under my throat. My therapist asked me why I perpetually feel so full. And for a moment, I imagine a plate full of nothing but your name. I'd eat forkful after forkful after forkful until I felt I'd explode. Frederick Nietzsche says, there is always some madness in love. I say, my love is all madness. Okay, and then this last one um, is a little longer. Um, I work with, um, uh, Julie mentioned in my intro that I work with an activist puppet theater company called Bread and Puppet Theater. Um, they are based in Vermont. They have a farm there. And I wrote this, I, I go pretty much every summer and wrote this um, a couple summers ago called Meet Me by the Fire Pit. Two New Yorkers are lying in the grass side by side underneath Vermont night sky. At the same time, we both say, so this is where we, they keep all the stars. I think we laugh, I think we say jinx. There is an older French woman who lays it on thick whenever she sees me. I can't tell if she's flirting or if she's just French. Either way, I've decided I'm done letting older women break my heart. I'll stay breaking my own. She wasn't even on my radar until she entered the kitchen, pyrite colored hair slicked back, wearing a floral blazer. I'm a sucker for venerable women in blazers who tell me I'm beautiful. We were among the group cleaning dishes in the communal kitchen while a fiddle quartet played. We both danced together, our heads swimming, our mouths laughing. Occasionally we'd use damp wooden spoons and spatulas to improvise percussions that paired well with the fiddle tunes. Midnight is for cuddling up close to two loved ones beneath several blankets in a quiet trailer, our own little resistance against Northern Vermont autumn night. The door to the trailer is broken open. Neither one of my loves complain about my cold feet touching them the way my mother used to when I shared a bed with her as a child. My feet are always cold literally and figuratively, not just for the sake of this poem. We sit in an ancient school bus turned home, swapping stories while holding cannabis smoke behind our teeth. I don't need the hit because I'm already up, up, up. The next day we apologize for potentially keeping nearby bodies from sleeping. 
Even though that night, one of my loves announced that we had to be quieter, but only if we were having the same amount of fun. A nearby body says he can't imagine anyone wanting to silence a group whose euphoric joy is driven simply by the presence of each other. Like the baby's breath and blackberries we picked in the field, I have been plucked up by some divine something and lifted up all the way past where the stars are kept, only to be thrown back into the world of towering concrete and mundane routine. But then again, I get restless anywhere. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, Marley. That was wonderful. Uh, I'm now pleased to, to welcome our next reader, Rage Hezekiah. Rage is a poet and educator who earned her MFA from Emerson College. She is a Cave Canem, McDowell, and Ragdale Fellow and a recipient of the St. Boltoff Emerging Artists Award. Rage is the author of Unshakable, I'm sorry, Unslakeable different than Unshakable, Unslakeable, from Paper Nautilus Press, published in 2019, and the book Stray Harbor from Finishing Line Press, also published in 2017, 2019. You can find more about her work at Rage Hezekiah, R-A-G-E-H-E-Z-E-K-I-A-H, Dot com and Juno will put that into the chat for you. So please join me in welcoming Rage as our second featured reader this evening. I am Rage. I'm grateful to be here with you all. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, thank you, Marley, for starting us off. It's really good to start with love poems. Um, I brought all my sex poems, <laughs> um, so <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Um, I'm going to start with sex education. Virginity was the currency of being wanted. I learned from the local seminarians who preached abstinence in our public high school. By then, my boyfriend's dick had already been everywhere except inside me, his want a tremolo. I'd trained my stamen on Sharpie markers before his mouth was on me at 14. We fumbled in a tent in Arizona, rustling nylon while his parents slept. At school, I watched a virgin unwrap and chew a piece of gum, then spit the wad into her own palm, offering the sticky mound to a boy who refused it on cue, his face a lemon of disgust. Nobody wants someone who's already been used. I crossed my legs pretending. In truth, I was giddy with power, in awe of how I'd made a boy wither and whimper, my grip firm, his pleasure my reward. He limped himself malleable. I held him hard like the stick shift of my little red Jetta, my thirst for control of a brado. You knew and watched. You knew and watched as I sat on the jet in the youth pastor's hot tub. My calm expression caught your attention. I attempted to come in secret, shoulder to shoulder with preachy teens. This, er, this internal quiver could go undetected, but you knew me too well. Saw my incisors press plump lower lip, a tiny pleasure cue. My eyelids quick flicker signaled I was so close to climax, but you called my name and I came back to myself, stock still, slowing my breath, sweating in pious company. Um, I have two more, and uh, this is called On Vacation. We weren't fooling anyone, rehearsing neutral faces, hands down each other's pants in the minivan's back seat. 
I practiced tight fisted motion while your parents drove. You carried spare boxers in your backpack, slipped into gas station bathrooms to peel off sticky underwear. I laid a pillow on my lap and soaked my shorts. Your thick fingers plunged into new wet. I squirmed silent, channeling electricity in my abdomen. I handled you in hot tubs and hallways, empty corners of state park cabins, splintered with old wood. Um, and I'll end with this poem, this is called Consent. I took him in my mouth at 14, braced for the jolt of hot liquid, acrid, unwelcome. I didn't learn consent until 23, fucking a woman who needed yes with every action, asking, can I touch you here? Is this okay? I learned possession of my body, the unexpected agency of pleasure. I was oblivious until she held me from the inside while I sobbed, her mouth soft on my carpal. I bellowed deep and loud, howled a chasm, open as a peony. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rage. That was wonderful. Um, I've now finished my heavy lift of the evening, and I am thrilled um, to turn the program over um, for MC responsibilities to the incomparable Casey Catherine Moore. Um, Casey had the vision for doing this event this evening, and I'm so grateful to her. She's been partnering with me over the past six months as we've been doing more Zoom events at Sinister Wisdom. And Casey is also the architect behind our writing workshop series, uh, which starts for the spring at the end of this month and goes through um, June, I believe. And I will put information in the chat um, about the writing workshops that we have coming up. And if you sign up for those, you'll also um, have the great privilege and opportunity of working with the wonderful Casey. So I will turn over the event to her with my great gratitude and appreciation for everything that she is doing for our Sinister Wisdom community. Casey. Well, thank you so much, Julie. Um, I appreciate you saying yes all the time. It's wonderful. Um, and I really enjoyed working with you and everyone at Sinister Wisdom. And I am so thankful you guys are here tonight because we have some amazing readers who bravely signed up. And I appreciate you guys all being here and sharing some of your Valentine's Day with us. Um, so I won't hold it up. Our first reader is Elliot Botzadek. Hey everyone, welcome from Philly where it's cold. Do two short poems in my two minutes. <sighs> to enter into my body. To enter into my body. To enter into the ancient cave of me. Sketches of sacrifices, bloody handprints. To enter into prairie thunderstorms, lightning ricocheting along nerves to neocortex. Would you seek shelter in a cave sharp with bone and flint? Risk a brainstem tensed, charged, likely to bolt? Enter into my body, into the reptilian core of me? Excavate, reveal the locked gate water swollen, iron rusted. Cut open the skin, calloused over the key in my outstretched palm. Lift it, trailing tendon to the hole. Turn hard to the left, twice. And a silly love poem. My love for you is not metaphorical. I love you like the moon loves the sun. I love you like the desert loves the night. I love you like the honey loves the bear. Love you like the tree loves the chair. Love you like the hand loves the slight. 
I love you like the shore loves the hurricane, love you like the signal loves the moving train. I love you like Hollywood loves love at first sight. I love you like New Jersey loves New York, love you like the swan loved Bjork, love you like the vampire is loved by the bite. I love you like Peter loved the pumpkin shell, love you like gravity loves repel, love you like love poems love the trite. I love you like a star loves the universe, love you like the body loves the hearse. I love you like Lutherans love uptight. I love you like evangelicals love to save us, love you like yeshiva bochers love pay us, love you like Baptists love to smite. I love you, love, like love loves love. Love you like the hawk loves the dove. Love you like every little thing is gonna be all right. I love you like the habit loves the nun. I love you like the moon loves the sun. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elliot. I um, appreciate you starting us off. Um, our next reader is Chocolate Waters. Okay, am I unmuted? I think I am. Can you hear me? Hi, everybody. I'm going to... Chocolate, you're muted now. Okay. How okay, about that? We can hear you, yes. All right. I'm going to read you a poem that I wrote in 1975. And it's probably the first lesbian uh, love poem, erotic love poem uh, that I ever wrote. It's from my first book to the man reporter from the Denver Post, 1975. Oh God, how did I get this old? <laughs> okay, the lesbian sexually defined by a dyke this time took her hand, she took her hand, then led her, she led her to a soft spot on the floor. The pillow smoothed and fondled, she fondled her, she fondled her. The hands on the necks played like harps, she parted her hair, she parted her legs at the knees, she played her fingers over the skin, the slow winds and trumpets blowing underneath her. She kissed her on the ears, the slow breathing, their mouths in the air, touching, barely touching on the ears behind her hair. She stroked her gold furry hair that was wet, her clit that was wet. The tip of her clit in her mouth was so wet. Oh, eat me, soft, so soft. The nipples, her hands between her legs, the stroke of midnight, her hands, oh, rub me slow. Her mouth, oh, lick me slow. Her Legs open wide, the triangles of gold weeping come, oh, come into my mouth. I can feel you coming, oh, come at the tops of the heads, at the bottoms of the feet, so close in the air, moving, talking to each other with nipples, the long stretch of legs, the swirled in breathing, slow, soft coming, the mountains so wet, yes, sloppy wet, as new grass, she parted her legs at the knees, oh please, oh please, she played her, she played her, she played her. Here's the illustration that goes with it. <laughs> by Mary Alice Fifty. Thank you, everybody. I have a new book coming out. I'll put the uh, info in the chat. It's called Muddying the Holy Waters. And I'll give you the information on how to get it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Chocolate. Um, 
for that reading. Our uh, next speaker is Janine Normand. Hello, I'm Janine Normand, also known as Dr. Jazz Normand, Jewish lesbian poet currently living in coastal Alabama. Constellated time. She is whispering around my face, loosing me, yet her constellated eyes fix me. This impossible emanation, her hair, a halo of perfume so powerful, a holy cloud, a web. My bones picked clean by her precise teeth and clever lips, my body dissolved in the crucible of her sex. My soul, free of flesh and weight now, swift up flight. The Thank next you. poem is Tango Contiga. The tango is playing for us and you smile at me in Spanish. We are magnetized with devotion like the moon's silver pull. Emotion to emotion, body to body, spellbound and irresistible desire moving together like the harmony of the tides. My thighs touching yours as though you too are music. The waves kiss the rainbow shore, electric wet currents. We are shaping the air around us, a music becoming of our tango. The waves are swelling, each instrument, each rhythm, each note, each nuance, striving to become what we are. There is no time but the measure of music and the twirling of my heart on your lips. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. Um, our next speaker um, is Bonnie Morris. We had uh, one person that uh, couldn't come. So Bonnie, sorry to put you oh. on the spot, but you are next. Hi, hi everybody. Um, uh, this is um, a poem that I actually wrote uh, almost 30 years ago when I was in grad school. A poem I had lost and forgotten about and then found a while back. Uh, now, in my new book, uh, Earlier Households from Headmistress Press. And I'll, I'll put that info out there. I'm the author of 19 books. Uh, uh, so I'll just list my, my website, I think. This is uh, called Two Apartments and it's about a hot summer night in my twenties. <laughs> hot. Chance of late evening cloud bursts, insistent mosquitoes dance at the screen. No worry, love, we're protected by charms and weather, words and dreams, steam rising from the rain spout, memories kettle pressed into our testing of each other. I am brown in the mirror tonight, sweat clings to my back like varnish to the banister and the base is turned up in my spine. The water warm from the tap tonight, spiders sleep on the sill, Vines wilt over lawns in the fine smelling dark. My damp shoes dry across yesterday's news. I'm still up, still steaming, digging my hot fingers into the couch, waiting to hold you, to kiss your long hair, like hearing the long vines wilt on the lawn in the fine smelling dark, awake on the couch, warm from the tap, asleep on the still, seeming up from my shoes, your hair on my pillow, my heart in my throat. And one more quick one. I don't wanna say quickie. <clears throat> this is about being in love with my dance teacher, dance lesson, also from earlier households. Firm chin balanced on cupped left hand, I thrust my old green pen across these lines. The hours we met but did not meet, the months I wrote but did not write, one long staccato night took me from the bar to stretch, to unbound leaping down, damp fleshed on the hardwood, flexed, turned out, 
Your eyes followed me, swallowed me, your wood grain face, a consciousness made narrow. I danced across that old worn floor, graceless, careless, a warm space. It encircled us like gnarled tree branches, living, old. I breathed your hands across my back. I knew in you the thoughts of me that lingered, bent towards some wide future now. I met you halfway with my bashful heart, bow to the floor beneath my folded knees. Thank you, happy Valentine's Day. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Our next reader is Jennifer Abad. Three short poems. What I know, if there's one true thing, I love my wife so, the way she moved me was just her hello. Angela and I were together for 37 years and she died two and a half years ago. <clears throat> this poem is called What Should Have Been Our Next Stage. Kids grown out of the house. We could have shut off the phone, smoked the joint, listened to Nina and Hazel Scott. Her ample brown body, self-assured, rests against the walnut headboard. At the foot of our bed, light just right for me to look at you, you at me. I'd dance for you. We'd find out who we'd become, old lesbians, ripe with desire, with time to linger in love. Last poem is Crone, inspired by a poem by Lucille Clifton. Do not send me out among strangers, sisters. I carry much strength in the ravines of my thighs, hair cropped purple, unkempt with distinction, eyes soft crescent moons ignite rebellion. Sisters, who will hold me? Who will find me beautiful if you do not? Thank you so much, Jennifer. It's always so nice to hear you read. Um, Jennifer's also been to some of our writing workshops. I know some other attendees here have, so I just wanted to talk about them for a second. Um, our next one is with Brianna Dim on February 27th. It's on fan fiction slash fiction. So should be great. Um, they are amazing. Um, but we have all the series through June up and the wonderful performer who opened our show, Marley Miller, has a workshop in June on love poetry. So if you're sitting here listening to this amazing love poetry and want to write your own, definitely sign up for Marley's workshop. And thank you, Julie. She just put the link in the chat to our writing workshops. Um, we are doing sliding scale payment for them starting at six dollars um so just a way to thank our <coughs> speakers and staff that are running them and support the magazine um so it's definitely a pay what you can um and lots of different topics throughout between now and june so i'll put more information about those in the chat as we go on and um, i'll also drop my email if you have any questions about signing up so our next speaker is Louise Moore. <laughs> okay, can everybody hear me? Great. Um, well, great. Uh, this is called listening to N Nina M Mizukiri sing plaisir de more. And Nina Mazurkiri is a woman who has 100 gold records. One, the voice. Simple, perfect, as Joe might burst into the stadium with her seemingly effortless stride at the 1984 Olympics. Two, the voice breaks your heart like watching the Swiss entry, whose name was Gabrielle Anderson Swish, stagger the last meters of that marathon, but walk upright across the finish. The second piece, 
kissing, getting, giving, packets of Kool-Aid straight to hearts and body parts. No sloppy kisses, please. No, dry, kindling, igniting, in notes, vibrating, in an alley under a nipple looking street light, in beds, lots of cars, one on the cheek of a cancer filled woman whose intentional death was in a week, kindling kisses. Thank you. Thank you so much, Louise. Our next reader is Sonia Freneta. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is a poem called Work. It's the second half of the poem because I can't, I don't have enough time for the whole poem, but it's, it was written quite a while ago. I lift and set up the next 50 pound part. Your breasts elevate me. Believing I know what your nipples look like, I suck each one. You watch, wanting more. You like pulling my leg in the ladies room. Take it easy, compa, you say. When my tired face rules, your soft giggle leaves with me, leaves your thick hair again and my chilled body. Celia, dear one, your name kisses my tongue, a fantasy at work, your big teeth spread, your hands brown, lilting gently over steel housings toward me, Chica. One morning after work, a bunch of us go out to a breakfast place. We joke, talk, rehash the night, looking wan, but having a good time. I catch Celia checking me out. She twinkles down the busy table, heart quickens with my blush. I get up, go to the bathroom and pee, feels good. I hear someone come in, I wipe, flush, open the stall door and Celia, wait, pushing me back in, reaching her face up, full lips bathing mine and solid lust. Am I dreaming? Her strong body barely buzzes against mine, fingers at my chin. I've been wanting to do that for a long time and giggles. I lock shut the stall door, my cunt flooding hot against her brave shivers. I let her lips take me once more. The door rattles, we stop short. We go out cool, keep this a secret from everyone we know. We try sleeping together at her house when Jorge is away, the light orange and low but she's afraid she's not doing it right. That luscious kiss was solace, recovery, like those Friday mornings after a week of night shift. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sonia. Our next reader is Pamela Thomas. Okay, um, I guess Pamela, I know they were here earlier. Maybe they got logged out. Um, so Jean Taylor, you are up next. Thank you, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, good, good. Um, uh, uh, this has been marvelous, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let you know that I'm, I'm uh, speaking from the land of the Wurundjeri Wurrung people of the Kulin Nation here in uh, Bulaka Bulaka Nam, which is Melbourne, Australia. And of course, time-wise, we're, um, um, we're Monday, nearly midday. So it's the day after uh, Valentine's Day here. Uh, I'm paying my respects to the Indigenous people um, all around Australia. So I've got three short poems uh, that I wrote years and years ago back in the 90s and early 90s. 
so um, yes, they're not they're not current, but they're still relevant to my life. First of March, the loving kindness of a whole pot of coffee made fresh every morning. The first cup brought to me in bed as I struggle upright to appreciate your bountiful gesture while opening my eyes to the lovely familiarity of your dear self, pulling up the blind and letting in the day. This one's called Friday the 28th. Your clothes hanging in my bedroom remind me of your hands on my body. Remind me, as if I needed reminding, mind you, that we're lovers, passionately engaged in our lesbian love affair of the heart. This one's called fucking. It's those slippery folds that get me every time. The tangy taste of your, you on my tongue and the feel of your vagina pulsing on my finger as you come and come and come. Nice girls don't fuck. Never was a nice girl anyway. As you open your heart, your legs, your cunt for me, I'm moved by your generous response to my need. Fucking you, fucking me, let's come together, darling. Ah, that's better. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jean. Um, our next reader is Cassidy Scanlon. Hi, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. I have two poems today. The first one's short, and it's called Aries Moon. With no mother tongue, you speak fire. Language could not name you, but love can. And my second poem today is called Queer Temporality. Everyone's always asking if we're a thing, eager to mold our 12-year friendship into easy categories of girlfriend and girlfriend. And really, I'm just a femme queen praying to your butchdom. I pay tribute and plane tickets and phone calls, shrinking the distance between you and me are back in our teens, flying down tree-lined highways and science smoke to Lady Gaga's bad romance. Only this love is good. This love is grand. Climbing mountaintops and building houses. The one you always said you'd get married in. We used to dream of men. Now we see each other. People always want to know for fucking, which we haven't, but we don't avoid it either. Possibility has always been our brand. What's more erotic than almost a decade of being seen? Not like voyeur and exp exhibitionist scene, but the kind of sight that comes from loving the pieces that make up being. The peace of knowing another person loves the history of your skin. Last summer spills the past into the palm of my heart. Malleable memories becoming soft again. We stay up till the sun aches, stooping on your rooftop, spliff lips sifting to say what only silence can describe, the blueprint of our love hardening in the sky. Thank you. Thank you, Cassidy. Um, and our next reader and final reader for tonight is Lori DeRosiers. Hi, and you pronounced it perfectly. Thank you. <laughs> um, happy Valentine's Day. This is such a delight to be here. I have just oh, wonderful work. What a joy. Um, so I'm going to read two uh, relatively short. Uh, one of this one's from my uh, book I wrote, uh, Typing with E.E. E. Cummings, which ah, you can't see because of my background. But <laughs> there, oops, there we go. Um, but it's from Glass Lyra. I'll put that in the, uh, there we go. Um, so uh, this one is called Sometimes I Am Alive Because With. All the poems in here are after Cummings uh, to some degree or another. Sometimes I am alive because with you, my softening older body rests, which you will find beside you becoming distant with slow breath, who on, your, who on your stomach I will rest my hand until we together find the nighttime air, sweet, intense, lilac-smelling moment, when your math, mouth rising, suddenly mine, with yours, not fierce, but gently, full 
and twine our legs and thighs. A healing rain corkscrews down to the perfect rise which you carry in the bloom between your hips. And this is an old one since everybody's time traveling tonight. <laughs> the, it's called 2HD. I want to find myself behind your eyes while you write. I want to live in your images of necks unkissed and kissed and orchids so white I can taste the petals, so soft we can lie together on a bed of simile and maybe let Helen come and build us a fire from her lustrous hips. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lori. Um, thank you all who signed up to read. Um, it was wonderful to hear your sexy words tonight. I loved all of it. I hope you'll come back um, the next time we do an open mic, which will be whenever we can, whenever Julie says yes. Um, so uh, thank you so much for being here. Happy Valentine's Day. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Julie, um, who's gonna move us to the next little thing. I'm turning, uh, I'm turning it over to Christy. Christy um, Lynn Baluni is another uh, wonderful person who said yes to me. Um, um, and she is guest editing an issue that partially inspired this reading this, this evening. So she's gonna talk a little bit about the issue um, that she's co-editing as a guest editor and tell us about her and her co-editor and the whole, the whole process. So Christy, go ahead. Thanks, Julie. Can everybody hear me? Yes, awesome. Got got the mute turned off. I uh, thank you, Julie, and thank you, Casey. And uh, I just these events have been my life during lockdown. They are so amazing. It is so amazing to hear lesbian art and and uh, and connect with community. So thank you, everyone, for reading and for being here for these events. I have loved all of them. Yes, I am co-editing with my dear friend, July Westhale, a new issue of Sinister Wisdom, and we're so honored and excited. Uh, I have taught sex myself, sex education in official capacities like classrooms and Zoom rooms, and in unofficial ones like in bus stops and in basements, and I bet a lot of you have taught sex ed in many contexts as well. I think most queer women and non-binary folks end up doing this in some capacity. And that's why July and I are collecting your stories, your poetry, your essays about teaching sex for this new issue of Sinister Wisdom called We Teach Sex to Everyone. And we want to hear from sex workers, sex educators, pleasure activists, pleasure coaches, Everyone who read tonight, we want you to send your poetry to us and we want you to tell us how you teach and learn about bodies. And we want your love letters and your tales of triumph and poems and about sexy resilience and everything about sex. So uh, the deadline is the autumnal equinox, September 21st. Please, uh, I'll put the um, link for submissions into the chat there it is right now and uh we, we can't wait to hear from you we can't wait to get your stuff so please uh send send it forth uh i also want to invite everyone to join us for our tribute to irina klepfitz and in conversation with rachel levitsky on tuesday february 23rd coming up real soon that's at 7 p.m eastern standard time uh, there are more West, uh, more Sinister Wisdom events available, uh, at, and you can check that out at sinisterwisdom.org slash events. Uh, oh, and, and it looks like uh, Juno just put that link in the chat. Thank you, Juno. So now to our final song. It is The L Word by Your Girlfriend. And while we listen, while we play the music, you're welcome to stand up and dance and enjoy it. And Juno or someone else who's driving this thing will be highlighting different 
uh, different videos. So uh, keep your eye out and say hello to everyone. And when the music ends, Julie will end the Zoom call and that will be the end of the night. So uh, give me a moment to make the song happen and we're on. So I am almost there. Yes, yes, share. Yeah. 
Whatever. <laughs>